Hey everyone, welcome back to the shop. Today, let me get everyone up to date on turning a Tiger Moth into a Stomp SV4. All right, today, let's get the video started off with uh, a new acquisition. And uh, we'll take you outside and show you where uh, where I'm at with the uh, with the stop. All right, to begin with the new acquisition. Yeah, they're yellow. They're floats. Uh, that's for the uh, for the yellow uh, Piper Cub. I bought about two years ago, and it was my intent to put that on floats. So uh, I will show you a picture out of of the uh, old yeller. All right, the first thing I need to do is I'm going to go ahead and uncover the Piper Cub because it was built a little bit too heavy. So we'll get that recovered. I need to put new structure in so that this rear part of the floats can attach to it because that should pretty much go where the landing gear is going to go up front. Uh, the motor in the Piper Cub is a Kalt, K-A-L-T. It's a 22cc engine that runs a Zenoa uh, 23cc cylinder on it. So uh, it just didn't have enough power. It's barely got enough power right now to fly like a Piper Cub. Uh, but because we're going to be throwing floats on it, I've got an Aerovate 32cc gas engine that I got probably about, oh, I don't know, eight, ten years ago. Uh, brand new in a box. And we'll throw that on board the uh, Piper Cub to give it enough oomph to get it up off the water. Now, where I'm at, here comes the sunlight. Where I'm at with the stomp, you can see I've got uh, pretty much right there. There we go. It's, uh, it's dry decks. You know, pink turns white. So at least let you know when it's dry. So right now, the first coat I put on this morning, because uh, the wings have not been had its first sand down. Um, so I'm going to go ahead. I'll bring these things inside. Sorry about the light. Um, I'll bring this those inside and get it sanded. Uh, the fuselage, you can see, is pretty much, it's got its first... A uh, good sanding job done. I've only got a couple little spots to fill up here There's a couple little spots in the horizontal stabilizer bottoms fine. So this as you can see I Did go ahead and put the blocks of wood back in so I've got to do a final sand on that spot So I filled in around it this one. It's going to be probably a couple coats of uh, the uh, What you call it? the putty? Um, to go ahead and get those cracks filled because it's first coat and there's a certain amount of shrinkage so um, But this one's almost ready for uh, for nitrate dope to seal it in I'm hoping to do this by the end of the day. So when that time comes, I'll bring it back for that but uh, for the Pretty much vertical stabilizer. There was almost nothing that needed to be fixed on this just a little patch down here and on the back here and then for the uh, uh the elevator it had a little bit of a spot where it dropped down inside here so these have been filled these will be sanded down so that's pretty much where this stands right now i'm going to come in and before i do my sand out on this one i've got to make sure everything's going to sit fine i think i'm going to come on in and because i've got to take the ailerons off i'm debating on whether i want to glue the hinges into the wing now or if I want to go ahead and wait till after and I'll probably wait till after I get my first couple coats of nitrate dope on just so it stiffens up the wood so when I go ahead and drill the holes and pin the the, the hinges through um, it, they should be ready to go so but uh, anyway the top wing I've got the top already covered for the seam I don't have the bottom done yet so that'll get done next so anyway, now at least you know where it's at. Um, I've just been, once again, really busy at work. And uh, this is my only day off right now, uh, this week. So everything slowed back down to my time down in the shop. So let me go ahead and I'll get everything pretty much all uh, sanded down. And as soon as it comes time to start putting that first coat of dope on, um, I'll bring you all back. All right. One thing I didn't show you guys was how I put the fuel tank in. Uh, I had to make some changes uh, because where the fuel tank is supposed to go is not where it's going to go. I like to have in my uh, fuel tanks on the CG uh, when I'm running gas motors just because uh, you don't have the same issue uh, with pulling fuel that you do with glow engines. So let me go ahead and show you what I did. All right. What I would have liked to have done, this was just something, just a block of wood, some three quarter inch. It's probably closer to seven eighths uh, spruce just as a height, just to try to figure out exactly how high up I wanted to put this thing. And unfortunately, when this thing was sitting 
on its side at the height that I wanted to put it, it was bumping up against, uh, it would be getting in the way of the wing. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and drop it down a little bit lower than it is right now on top of this piece of spruce. So what I did, I came in and grabbed a piece of plywood and I made one of these. Yeah, that's, that's going to be the fuel tank mount for it. So the way this is going to go in, this come in, I've already got some indicator uh, lines set up where it's going to get glued into place. Go ahead, rotate it up. Get it at the right height. And the fuel tank is going to sit on top of this. So it's going to be not here, it's going to be on the inside. And that's the, the little uh, slots for the strap to strap around it. I'm going to go ahead and put a, uh, a riser on the back side of this thing to stiffen up the board and to keep the fuel tank from sliding backwards. So, uh, so yeah, and I'll probably put something up front too. So I will get this all set up with the fuel tank sitting on top of it uh, before I go ahead and slide it back in and uh, have everything glued into place because I want the fore and the aft stoppers on both ends. And what I can make the stoppers out of um, I'll make it out of some tri-stock. This is just a piece of scrap pine, which would work just fine for me just to go ahead, glue it into place so that way when the fuel tank sits down on top, it can't slide fore or aft. So whether it's this or it's a piece of spruce, I may just go ahead and cut another piece of spruce uh, just because it's a little bit uh, nicer quality condition than this, but uh, that's what I'll use. All right, it's been a really long day. I decided to do it outside just because with the nitrate dope, I'm not locked inside the shop. Uh, where every once in a while you have to go for a little walk outside just to kind of clear your mind. Um, anyway, uh, I've got a first coat done on everything. I did not show you doing the whole coat on everything because it took me over three hours. Yeah, the, the first coat of dope, it absorbs so much into the wood the first time. It takes a long time to get that first coat on. The second coat goes a lot faster because you've already got one coat that's fully absorbed into the wood and now you're just adding to it. So what it's doing is it's going in and it's kind of, best way to say it's reliquifying uh, uh, the dope that's already in the wood so it allows more to get pulled down inside the wood. So once again, it's, it's I'm putting two coats on uh, and then when that dries to get the fuzzies off, I'm gonna hit it with some 320 grit sandpaper. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put one more coat on. Sometimes you could put two on, I'll just put one more on so that way I've got three, three coats. And then everything is ready to cover. Now, when you cover it, it's gonna probably be one to two coats. And I'm gonna do the same thing because the, you're gonna to wanna to sand uh, between coats, but still with the fabric, I'll do two more coats of just nitrate dope. And all that's gonna do is that's just gonna lock the weave together. And then I'm gonna go ahead and then we're gonna put a filler in. And what I'm gonna use for a filler is anti-monkey butt powder. Yeah, I've had this for decades. Uh, me and a buddy, we used to race. We did some off-road nationals. We were up at, uh, I think it was Spring Creek up in um, Minnesota, one of the uh, supercross tracks or the, the, the motocross tracks. Um, and our race was off in the woods. So needless to say, uh, I got enough sand down the back side of my pants that uh, when it came time to hop in the shower, didn't realize the shower, my buddy sterilized it with a little bit of uh, chlorine in the water. So the pain that I went through, so as a joke, they had to get me some monkey butt powder. There you go. That's what friends are for. So anyway, that'll be the filler. Uh, and then what that does is, as the weave crosses over, um, this will go ahead and pretty much lodge itself in between the weave. And then everything's good enough just to start painting on top of it, so it'll be golden. All right, now what I never failed to mention, what the nitrate dope is doing, because it's going down getting absorbed into the wood. And the reason why you're putting it on the wood first is because when you put it on the top of the fabric, if you didn't lock the wood into place, all the nitrocellulose dope that you're gonna put into the fabric will get pulled into the wing. The only place it won't get pulled into the wing is over the open spaces. So say that on the, on the wing itself. Oops, don't drop it. So say that on the wing, 
this stuff uh, up here on the top, say the leading edge of it, uh, it would pull the nitrate dope right through the fabric. So if you went to go ahead and spray it, you would have uh, spots where the paint, it's, the paint itself would get sucked into the wood. So that's why you've got to get everything properly taken care of before you put the fabric on. So had I not put enough dope or put any dope on it here, but went and doped the fabric up where it's, it's in direct contact with the wood, that's where you're going to see the problem. Down here, where it's all open, um, there was nothing for the nitrate dope to get absorbed through the fabric into. So the paint would stick very nicely on the open surface, uh, but of course on the wood it would be, uh, it would look like poop. Hopefully with what you saw today, you got a little bit more of an insight on what you'd have to do if you're gonna go ahead and cover with fabric uh, and using nitrate dope. Uh, once again, I've never used butyrate dope just because it takes so long for this stuff to dry. Um, but anyway, what I'm going to do is we're going to call this a video and then I will bring everyone back uh, when it comes time to start covering, which is going to be next week. So see you guys next time back in the shop.